Hello and welcome to Wealth Within TV, the channel where we delve into all things stock market with hints, tips and analysis and more. Today we're exploring the top microcap stocks that presented at the 13th annual microcap conference right here in Melbourne. Stocks like Bubs, Rays, Rocket DNA and more. But before we get into those, let me introduce our expert panel. From Wealth Within, we have senior analyst Philip Tortevsky and he is joined by Alexandra Lowen from the ALX Report and Bourse TV. Welcome team, how are we? Fantastic, Dale. Your first time on the panel here with us. Phil's an old seasoned hand over there. Yes, yeah, so I'm used to seeing a lot of new names here on the panel uh, every well, week, yes. but it's good. Great to have you on. And I mean, what a conference, right? It was my first time, real interesting. Yes, yes. Yeah, you've Thanks. heard me talk about it so many times over 13 years. And I know you've been a few times, so we'll talk about that in a little bit. But uh, let's move on. Now, as a business, we've been a part of the MicroCat Conference for all of 13 years as Wealth Within has been a sponsor of the MicroCat Conference. However, this year, we sponsored it through Talking Wealth. Now, I've personally been to 12 conferences and think this year was one of, if not the best. Now, I know, Alex, you've been to several. So what were your thoughts about this year? This year, the highlight for me was seeing so many more people, the investors, <laughs> VCs, having discussions, everyone loving being back in person the last few years and yeah. seeing these highlights of Intelligent Monitoring Group have been presenting now three years running, yes. for instance, and just for highlights to see them progressing and the highlight because microcap conferences each year do give people the platform yeah. to showcase what they're doing. Well, I think, I mean, this year, I think we finally got over the COVID hangover. Yes. I can say that as well. And everybody's looking a lot more positive anyway. But I know, Phil, this was your first microcap conference. So what are, what are your thoughts on it? Well, initially, I thought, you know, this is a place where companies are going to window dress and put their best foot forward, say how great their companies <laughs> are. But I mean, to me, the most uh, eye-opening thing was where, you know, owners, CEOs were openly saying, hey, we've done a few things wrong here and this is how we can fix the problem. So just that openness, the candidness um, really to me spoke out and, and some great companies, great technology. It was it was fantastic because at the end of this, at this end of the market, you always need, I mean, with these companies, what's going to be that catalyst, the news to send that share price soaring? And you get to hear from the CEOs, hey, we've got this in the works, we've got that in the works, exact dates about when, um, you know, phase two trials might be ending. So very exciting. Yes, I loved it. I love it because you can get B2B, belly That's to belly. It. Yes. It's, where else are you going to do that with mm. CEOs and CFOs of listed companies? You just don't get that chance unless you're a fund manager. So mm. to me, that's an exciting part. But anyway, well, now we did spend two days of this year's conference. And if I may speak for myself, not only were the scones great, but uh, we really also did experience some great presentations. So we're going to tackle the best companies from our opinion that we saw on day one first, and then we'll get into day two later now. Literally the first company presenting this year was AV Jennings with a stock ticker code of AVJ. Now AV Jennings was established in 1932, is a leading residential property development company with a name that continues to be one of the most recognised housing brands in Australia. It is listed on the Australian Security Exchange and the Singapore Exchange through SGX Global Quote. Now currently its share price is sitting around 30 cents. Rugby legend and managing director of AV Jennings, Phil Kearns, presented to the audience and highlighted the challenges they've faced and how they're moving forward with new technologies. Now, I was really impressed with what they're doing. Now, I'm going to go to you, Alex, to share your thoughts on what AV Jennings talked about. Well, I was most impressed with them because it's only 10% mm -hmm. that they need, a 10% deposit from these buyers so that then they can have this turnkey Done in, is it good, five months? Yeah, so five months because they've got this it's a Pro 9 system in factories. They actually build all the walls in these factories, drive them over a truck and put it all together, which means you don't need an on-site dunny for 18 months. You don't need fencing or you know security fencing and all the other stuff, electricity, just the whole range of things, which means they can build a lot more houses quicker and cheaper, which is great for home buyers. And they're saying the quality is still there. Yeah, the quality was, well, that was really surprising. It's like really high quality, but quicker and cheaper. So, I mean, first home buyers have got to love that. Absolutely. To be able to just put 10% down and then have five months later their home ready to go. Brilliant. Yeah, and they've got also a thousand, I think a thousand lots. They talk about lots, but a lot to me, it's not just a thousand houses, it's a thousand pieces of land. 
that they will develop over a period of time. So they're land banking, which is a great thing that they're actually doing. So they'll be releasing more of those, but they're a national company. So we've got to have a look at them, don't we? Absolutely, and see what, what they're up to and around Australia. All right, let's go and have a look at the chart. So on your screen is the monthly and weekly charts here of AV Jennings. And I mean, what stands out to me, we'll go to the monthly chart here. And you know, you often find a lot of these micro cap stocks, they, for one, there is quite a bit of a liquidity, but also you don't see so much movement in the share price, especially if, if they are in that, you know, dormant accumulation type phase. But with this one, it's quite interesting. We've seen 30 cents be such an important level for this stock, acting as a springboard for uh, the most recent price move since 2008. You saw a nice little move through here. And then again in 2012, it was a springboard to price rises. And what do you have it? We're faced at 30 cents again right now, which is so exciting, Dale. Um, we are seeing one of those technical patterns in the market of that accumulation. Looks like it's finding support, doesn't well, it? Well, really? it really does. I mean, you can't fault the 30 cents. It's been such strong support in the past. And now, with the way the market is basing out and accumulating, if it can get its head through this momentum line here, it's, it's pointing to all the signs leading to a nice little run up to at least that 40, 50 cent mark. But what's also really interesting about this stock, and you know, we always talk about the way um, prices move mm -hmm. to signify the end of these runs. You know, yes. it's, it's really important to find that out. And if we go back to the chart, you'll see that in October 2023, we had that huge blow off in price. And generally yes. with that amount of selling, it's either gonna indicate one of two things. That's real strong selling that's gonna continue, or it's in the end of the run. End of the run. So, I think it's in. I mean, they recently raised $30 million to really capitalise themselves. And I know they've got like a thousand lots. And when they mean lots, they're not mean houses and houses. I think they mean lots of land yeah, right. for housing. So they're land banking now, which is great because obviously they get that growth if they own the land and then they, they sell that off to build houses. And this is what these sorts of developers do. So to me, with the market looking good over the next couple of years, if we start seeing interest rates come down, I think it's poised. Uh, do you want to add anything before we move on? Well, no, I think you've highlighted the key areas. Thank you so much, Phil. Mm. Mm. All right, well, let's move on to that uh, one that was in the past has been a stock really pushed by retail investors, and that is Bubs, and it has a stock ticker code of BUB. Now, founded in 2006, Bubs Australia is principally engaged in the business of inspiring new generations of happy, Joyful Bubs through its range of super premium infant nutrition and well-being products targeted to proactive health management. Now, with the share price currently sitting around 12 cents, this stock has been where investors have risen the roller coaster. Now, CEO and MD Reg Wine really presented a great case as to why we should be looking at this stock. Now, Alex Bubs, I mean, I, the presentation just blew me away. So what were your thoughts on it? So what I've been impressed with is Christy Carr in 2005 took this initiative with the goat's milk. Mm. Goat's milk is the key product. Well, she did and it for personal reasons. Like it a was. a child or daughter or something, was it? And I totally understand that having a daughter with intolerances mm. and to be able to provide this product, not just for her daughter, but then take it now internationally, now in the US as well. Yeah, that was an exciting thing to me. I mean, the US transition, obviously during COVID, something, whatever it was, they were, America imports a lot of baby formula, but they couldn't get it. So they looked to Australia and they looked to obviously A2 Milk and Bubs and Bubs went in there. They've got approval to, it's a limited approval with the FDA, but now they're going for full approval with the FDA, which is exciting and they'll get it. And they will. And they will. But what surprised me is America didn't have any goat's milk powder Isn't for, it for kids. Interesting. And to see yeah. now that they're 60% of what A2's market share is too. Yeah, and that was it. And it's all manufactured in Australia and they've got, um, it's organic as well uh, in terms of that. So, and to me, what was interesting was the companies in America that are producing baby milk, the powdered milk like this, they're sort of old and old fashioned and they're big and slow and everything else. And they probably didn't see bubs coming. And I think it's an exciting proposition for them. It really is not just being organic, but getting this FDA approval in the US and having that shareholding there, mm. it's phenomenal. What so do you think? Well, let's go and have a look at the charts then. All right, so on the screen is the monthly and weekly. Now, again, we'll just go to the monthly chart here with this one because Bubs is in an interesting situation. Obviously, it had a nice little run from August 2016. They saw buying, but we've fallen off since then. And what's quite interesting now, we are trending down. 
So in terms of the share price, we are looking for, I guess, um, right now, some kind of catalyst to get this stock going. And, and potentially it could be what's happened with- Well, it. revenues are up with that move into the US. Yeah. Uh, they're up like 35 or 40%. Mm. I mean, I was just blown away by some of the figures and yet the share price is not reflecting it. Well, it's it interesting, the right? Yet. It's yes. interesting because sometimes you do get this dynamic where the yeah. share price does not follow, you know, everyone thinks, oh, the fundamentals are great. It should be rising. And yes, it should. But I mean, given it's an 11 cent stock, it really is still not privy to the top end of the market. So once it gets through that dollar level, then you'll probably see the institutional flow coming through, which will really send the share price soaring. But right now, the way the stock is poised, I would say, you know, exude a bit of caution if you are looking. It's more of a traders type market. It is basing out around 11 cents, but I would like to see it get above that 20, 30 cent level, break through this downtrend line, show a bit of buying momentum um, because with these stocks, you know, you can get stuck sideways. You, you, you really have to mm. keep that in mind. And following that share price is really going to let you know when it's time to enact. And, well, yeah, I know like, a lot of people thought, you know, this was in another A2 milk and for a while it did because A2 milk shot up and then obviously a bump mm. shot up. Mm. But then A2 milk's got a lot more challenges in the market because they're much more focused on China. Mm. Whereas, you know, Bubs has obviously got this huge uplift by being able to sell into the US market, which is really previously been closed off. Mm. So once they finish all the proper trials for the FDA and get the big tick of approval, I think it should really go off. So I'm excited about that Absolutely. over the next couple of years. Oh, yes. But anyway, let's move on to another stock. And this one, that is Raise, which is a popular stock with younger generation. Now, Raise Invest is Australia's leading wealth tech company with over 300,000 customers and around $1.4 billion in funds under management. Now, Raise have developed a suite of digital investment products that make it easy for customers to save and invest. Now, Brendan Malone, who's the managing director of Raise, he really didn't disappoint us as he highlighted why this stock has moved up this year to be now trading at around 43 cents. Now, Again, I'm going to ask you what your thoughts are, Alice, because this was the very first company to come out with saying, buy something and we'll round it up and we'll invest that for you. That's it. So the roundup concept, what do you think, Phil? The ra oh, well, I was, I think, out of the room here eating scones at this point when <laughs> race was happening. But uh, the roundup concept, I mean, it's always fantastic when you mm. can put money to good use, right? Because we spend so much money for silly things, if you will, and, and don't really factor in that idea that, hey, if you just invest a little bit, at time through compounding, that really grows at the end of the day. So I love the idea. Um, the share price is another thing we'll get into, but uh, did you want to mention anything else and on that? Pioneering it, the concept with this fintech company is mm. such a good news story. Mm. It really is. And the charts too, they're reflecting Yeah, change. it's quite interesting because if we go to the charts right now, you'll see that it is, you know, the stock has been unloved for quite a while. Um, but mm. coming back to previous levels during COVID, Feb 2020, where it did find the, I guess, springboard to the initial run during that COVID period. So what's quite nice about what's happening now is that, you know, stocks go through these phases, as you know, Dale, they go through expansionary phases, then they go through contractionary phases. And then when the, you know, the real strength in buying, generally what follows is a big period of accumulation. And that'll represent in the share price going sideways for a little while. But what's interesting is that we are seeing some buying coming through here. It's not um, necessarily too, too uh, sidewaysy. Um, we are seeing some volume come in around uh, mid to late September, which is also quite nice. So right now the stock is showing signs of life. Again, I would say we do need to go, if I can mark it up here with the horizontal line. You're allowed to do that, that's fine. If we can, sure, right? If we well, can. Why, I mean, while you're doing that, I mean, yeah. these that not only did they introduce the rounding up, mm. but they also introduced to the young generation fractal, fractional investing, if mm. you can say that properly. So, get bits, so yeah. fractional property fund, they are fractional Bitcoin, fractional um, ETF. So they young people can get into some of these investments, but they may not be able to get into them by the themselves position, yeah. in terms of a full position. But fractional investing has been a great little concept for these mm. younger people to really build their wealth and start to get that um, compounding happen so that then, then they can buy their first homes and get into the investing market in mm. a better way. But if you... I'll yeah. let you go back to the chart if you like. Thank you very much. Yes, all right. So going back to the chart, you can clearly see that since June 2023, the real strong buying came through through this period through here. And what's quite interesting, we saw selling uh, counteract that buying, but it hasn't taken out the levels where the buying started, which is around July 2023. So to that point, what I'm saying is that I really would like to see price get back above that 54 and a half cents 
to really consolidate and confirm that, hey, this buying, there is strength in it. And all we're seeing is just a pullback to that buying um, more so than real seller activity. So watch out for 54 cents. 54 cents. All right. Now I'm we're... seeing them um, yeah. just with, with what Brendan was presenting. It's very interesting to see the Raise Kids platform as well, what they're doing. Yes. Oh, yeah. To highlight that. Very, very much. And yeah. they really are targeting that, that younger generation. Yes. They're targeting and they're getting them into habits, then they're going to be stickable. It's like the old back in, well, it's probably too old for you, Phil. How old um, are you talking? But when you're in primary school, you know, the Commonwealth Bank yes, used to give the you the teams. little, you had your little Commonwealth Bank passport um, or pass, pass, savings book. That's what it was. It. You know, and you put little bit of money in at school and they got you as a client. Yeah. And that's why ComBank is the biggest bank in Australia. Oh, I've seen so. it now with my daughter. I mean, you know, uh, she's had money put into her account from gifts and presents and she's starting to earn interest already. She's not even, or well, she just turned three years just old. Just turned three. <laughs> cool. yeah, get, look after you when you get too old yeah. to look after yourself. Well, anyway, well, next we're going to look at Digital X with an interim CEO, Greg Dooley, talking about their listed spot Bitcoin ETF. And it has a stock ticket code of BTXX. Now, the responsible entity for that Bitcoin ETF is K2 Asset Management, also a listed entity and also a smaller cap type stock. Now, we have that out of the road. Now, Phil, I know this one really excited you. Well, to me, with these micro caps, it's all about, you know, if you can be a disruptive type company or technology, be first to the market. That's really, you know, that opportunity that's going to set you apart. And when you look at the share price, you know, opportunities at five cents, some of these stocks you get in right, um, you know, and that story really is backing um, and you get buyer interest in it. These stocks can be life-changing for people investing early on in the picture, right? Absolutely. And they're the only stock on the ASX that have Bitcoin on the balance sheet. Did you know that? Well, yeah. I mean, I, I, mean, I know you were in the room because you were quite interested in it. And I mean, I was actually in the room for this one as well. But I thought it was great how they are looking at blockchain technology. They're in, obviously, fintech. So they're looking. And I think they're the first listed company that ever had Bitcoin. And they're also, obviously, they're... The ETF, the digital, the ETF, yeah. as I said, which yes. is um, they've got their the um, K2 asset management obviously helped them do that. But I mean, to me, they're, they're building other technologies at the moment well, too. Well, I mean, I mean, think about also how many people are investing in Bitcoin. You know, mm. Let's face it, there's so many out there, and and to be have an instrument or, or an asset that you can invest in that you know that's listed because there's so much scams out there when you are looking to invest in Bitcoin or or any other that's levels. There, I mean, it, look, they're first. So we're we gonna look at the I mean, stock. The stock itself first, so Digital X. DCC, and we're going to have yes. a quick look at the ETF as well. Well, we're looking at Digital X, the company. I don't think we're going to get through to the okay. ETF because we've said seven. We can't be too greedy, right? I don't know. You could count like Janine. <laughs> oh, what? <laughs> I could. <laughs> but um, yeah, look, let's go to the charts and have a look there for you. Uh, obviously, you know, this one again. Um, really in that accumulative type phase. It had a big spike up back through March 09 where it reached highs of almost $4.30. So just think about that if you are getting in at these levels, four cents with potential to $4. That really could be a life-changing scenario. But anyway, uh, with what's happening recently, it is bouncing at around that $3, uh, three cent level, sorry. We have seen some life in the, in the last couple of weeks. November's been quite nice in terms of the share price. And right now, it is a bit of a short-term proposition. I would add some levels to watch out for. Uh, through here, you've got that, what's that, 11, 12 cent level. That is a level of resistance to watch out for for any upside movement. But then you've also got the huge support coming in at four or five cents, which is where it's positioned right now. So I think as the stock gets going, we do want to see you know stocks when they do form, they form those higher bases, the higher highs. We're at the early stage, the onset of that. So I would like to see one higher base form with this stock to give you that safer type opportunity. And then, you know, 13, 12 cents is definitely a real target. I think it looks exciting. I mean, mm. I know your eyes just lit up. when you they? Your, well, they were. I mean, I wasn't that far away from <laughs> yeah. Even though it was dark, I could see you through the darkness. Yes. Yeah. And your eyes lit up when they were chatting. Anytime it's disruptive or it's, yeah. it's first, you, you got to... Keep Absolutely. And what they're focusing on and what they're planning to do, mm. I had the pleasure with Boss TV to interview Greg Dooley mm. at the MicroCap conference and what he was talking about, his plans, even um, we've, we've highlighted here with the, what they're doing with not just blockchain but also the reg tech as well. Yes, all of that sort of stuff. Mm. Now that interview is going to be up on Boss TV soon, is yes. it? Yes. If it's not already. 
Should be today, hopefully. Should be today, hopefully. So watch out for that one. Um, by the time you watch this video, it should be there. Now, Alex, did you want to introduce the next stock? Love to. This next company presented last year, and it was great to see their growth. Martin Stein, the CFO of Alltech Batteries, again presented. Alltech is a specialty battery technology company that has a joint venture agreement with world-leading German battery institute Fraunhofer to commercialise the revolutionary Serenergy sodium chloride solid state battery. To explain Serenergy, these batteries are the game-changing alternative to lithium ion batteries. Serenergy batteries are fire and explosion proof, have a lifespan of more than 15 years and operate in extreme cold and desert climates. The battery technology uses table salt and is lithium free, cobalt free, graphite free and copper free eliminating exposure to critical metal price rises and supply chain concerns. I know this was one of your favourites, Dale. Yeah, it was, because I actually saw them present last year for the mm. first time and I actually spent probably 45 minutes chatting with them outside, the, the managing director, and grabbed all their booklets and I read them all when I came back in. I went, what exciting technology this stuff is. You're talking about batteries, and I mean, you know, Tesla's, exploding in flames mm. and people not wanting to park their cars, their their EV cars in their in their garage because their house might go down. That's you know, it. whereas these don't have any of those problems. When was he even hearing the story of Eastern the golf the golf mm. course last year, remember that? Yes. Oh, it was amazing. And to Lithium. me mm. what the to me the exciting thing was last year was too early for me. Looking at it as an investment last year when I came back, did the analysis on it, went, nah, too early. But now we're getting, a, a, we're pushing a lot more into this alternative energy mm. space. And these are great batteries that are just low risk, environmentally friendly. We don't have to try and get, you know, the you know things out of slave labor from the from wherever it is. I can't remember the name Africa, of the place. Maybe. Africa and Af those sorts yes, of countries. Exactly. So it's much more envir environmentally friendly to manufacture, but it's so much a better battery, which is really, really good. And the environmentally friendly point of view mm. is so key to this, because this stock is mm. really in my view. So a lot of people are actually doing a lot of research into lithium titanate because of the heat levels and issues. Yes. But seeing what they're doing, you know, and reducing that supply chain risk, also the price rises in, in the commodities out What have we got plenty of in the world? Salt. salt. Exactly. You know, I use salt in my pool and it just makes chlorine and then it goes back to salt again, <laughs> makes chlorine, goes back to salt again. So yeah. hey, that's pretty good. But how about we have a look at the chart? Then? All right. So on your screen are the monthly and weekly. Now, what I like about this stock in particular is that as a trader or investor type, there is much more volatility than the previous couple of stocks. So it is quite nice from that perspective. But right now, if we just apply our momentum line through here, you can see all tech has struggled to get to the flip side of that. And that would be the first, I guess, um, uh, ticker or marker I would like to see in terms of future price rises. But we are getting close, so that is exciting. Uh, we always talk about when stocks do turn the corner and give us um, you know, indication that they are moving to a bull market, we do wanna see that series of higher highs and higher lows. We are not seeing that just as yet. So I would exude some caution in terms of looking at picking up price right now, but it is coming into a significant level of support that it's tested again which is that four cent level. Very simple, very clear to me right now, the picture is that all that needs to occur for this one to show some signs of life is we do need to see a break of this um, momentum line at about six and a half cents. See what happens on the flip side of that. See what the sellers offer because it's always, as we say, though, the relationship between the buyer and seller. Yeah, yeah. What's the buyer doing? What's the seller doing? If we just go back to the chart um, to have a good look at that, we can see that seller activity from February 2024 has been what you're seeing in the red and buyer activity has only managed to claw back half of the most recent seller activity. Mm -hmm. Once that dynamic changes, we get through six and a half cents. As you said, in a technology, in a space that is, you know, renewables are the future. By 2030, we're supposed to get there yeah. to net zero. I don't know how that's going to happen. But anyway... Well, you know what excites me about this company? Because we've been chatting about takeover targets in this sector. Now, this has got to be, hands down, one of the best ones in that area because it's grid storage. You know, you can use these batteries in grid storage. Mm -hmm. And if you've got a battery that environmentally friendly, it's not going to explode the world, mm. um, and you can use it for grid storage, you're going to bet. I'm, I'm betting on some of these big energy companies are going to go, yeah, we'll have you once you get it to a bit more well, bigger. Well, we've already seen a very recent example with Rio uh, picking up Arcadium Lithium. And, yeah. and you know, it. 
getting them purely because of the technology that Arcadium has in terms of, you know, extracting that lithium and, 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 and turning it into a, a product, if you will. But um, so definitely in the right space to um, for that to happen as well. All right, definitely one to watch. Now, next we have a look at Hazer Group with a stock ticket code of HZR. Now, Glenn Corrie, Managing Director, presented to the audience. Now, Hazer Group is a pioneering technology development company undertaking the commercialization of the Hazer process, a low emission hydrogen and graphite production process. This process enables the effective conversion of natural gas and similar feedstocks into hydrogen and high quality graphite using iron ore as a process catalyst. Now sitting through this presentation, we could be excused for it being really technical, but Glenn did a great job of keeping it simple and I must say I was impressed. What did you think about this one, Phil? Yeah, I quite liked it. I liked the um, the presentation. It was real nice, and and you know, I think this is not their first time presenting. They presented also last year as well. Mm. So I was reading up a little bit on that. But um, again, interesting space. Um, great presentation. I mean, any thoughts? And I actually really had the pleasure of interviewing Glenn for Boss TV and hearing the story about the hydrogen process and what they're doing and the plan. I mean, even what they were talking about with this, um, it's going to be estimated with the worth of upwards of. 12 trillion I know. by 2050. Yeah. Can hydrogen you believe is it? the future, isn't it? It really? is. Of alternative energy sources, hydrogen is the one that's got the most potential. Yes. And this guys are, these guys are right in that right space, are looking pretty good. They are. It's definitely a stock to watch, in my mm. view. All right, so let's go and have a look at the chart. Then. All right, so on the screen are the charts. And again, a stock, unfortunately, which is in a downtrending phase mm. right now. So, I mean, you know, again, it shows to say that, hey, whilst stories are good on stocks and it is so important to um, look at the developments of these companies moving forward, it's always so crucial to look at the share price because you don't want to be sat, uh, sat stuck in a stock that is on the way down. The whole point of it is to buy it on the way up, right? So, That's but it. we are potentially approaching that period. Um, you can see this level that I've marked at about 25 cents, which has uh, acted as a springboard in the past, most notably around that 2018 to 2020 period where the stock found good support, found good buying. And then, you know, that saw the stock rise from about 30 odd cents all the way up to $1.80. So we are positioned at that level. Again, I've marked a nice uh, momentum line through here. That would be the first uh, port of call for me. Get through this momentum at around 50 odd cents, See what occurs on the flip side of that with seller activity. If there isn't much, then I think that's when you're going to get that um, reversal in terms of sentiment and, and potentially that uh, new expansive phase. Well, I like this because it's that they're producing hydrogen, but they're also producing graphite. The graphite story. Graphite, from what mm. I understand, and I may not be correct in this, is most of the graphite in it will come from China. Mm. So if you've got a company that's producing also graphite from this process, that opens that up because graphite is really important in a lot of different things that we need. Um, to produce. So I think it's fantastic that we've got a company doing all of that. Now, Alex, did you want to introduce the next stock for us? I'd love to. The next company and the last one we will highlight from day one is Argenica Therapeutics. That's stock ticket code AGN. Argenica Therapeutics was incorporated on the 20th of November in 2019, almost their fifth anniversary. Mm. Yes. <laughs> <And> <laughs> Happy anniversary. And to undertake the development and commercialization of a novel drug. The drug known as ARG007, a cationic arginine rich peptide, has neuroprotective properties that has the potential to offer protection to the brain following stroke and other acute central nervous system injuries. Dr. Liz Dallymore, the CEO, did a great job of informing us of just how effective this new drug is. What was really exciting for me was hearing about what it can do for stroke victims. Yeah, that was amazing. Yes. And it's about, I think, stroke victims, If again, if I remember the presentation, it was about oxygen getting into the brain around that and the stroke was stopping that, which is causing more damage, which means more people um, were affected by the stroke or their, mm. the effects of the stroke were worse. I think that's how it was. Well, yeah. yeah, how I remember it also was that there was two parts to a stroke. There's one part for getting the blood flow and then there's an, another section somehow, I don't know, doctor, but in terms of what they're doing to specifically protect the brain, um, which was... And it's speed, the speed of getting it to yeah. protect the brain with the oxygen levels. Yeah, and, and protecting those parts of the brain. Because mm. I, from, from, I think the research they said was like 2% of people that have a stroke fully recover. 
100%. Because of this, yes. Uh, no, well, that's that's traditionally only 2% fully recover yeah. after a stroke with everything back to normal again. So and because if they this. can help increase yeah. that, that's even better. So I think that's really fantastic um, in terms of the, the research they're doing. It's just amazing. So how's the chart look, Phil? Well, this one's right up my alley, Dale. It's actually going up. So let's go and have a look. I was um, about to call you Dr. Phil, but I didn't well, think that was Well, I need to be a bit more bald for that one. But um, is anyway. It, is it going up since the conference? A uh, little, yeah, a little. But Ooh. generally it is going up. This chart to me, looks the best out of the, the whole lot uh, today that we've uh, covered so far. So if we just go back oh, and wow, have a look. Phil's favourite stock. Yeah, can you tell? Um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so what's real interesting about Argenica, for one, it is moving up. There is buyer support. It is going through. Um, and, you know, these biotech stocks, they do really, um, when they do get going, they can really get going, and particularly if the news flow is positive following through. I know there's a lot they're of- They're gonna run a lot more news and emotion, aren't they? Absolutely, and it's all relevant to these phase two trials that they're doing all the time. If that gets through, then they get to the next stage of production, team up potentially with a partner, and then send the stock through the roof. But um, what's happening right now, in itself alone, the share price, there is, it's a buyer's market. There is buyer activity. We have seen a very important level at 65 cents get tested. You could see how important 65 cents was um, as resistance for this stock all the way from April 2022. So what was the major barrier for almost two years has now become support. And that shouldn't be sneezed at. That's very important when we're talking about price action. It's also respecting this upwards momentum where the stock bounced yeah, on the 27th of September, 2024. So right now, um, there is also a period through here, if you can see from 19th of January to 17th of May, where the stock did form this sideways type pattern. And all that basically means is that there was a really strong price agreement. When you get price agreements following a price run up, that's the market telling you that, hey, we are accepting new prices here and 60 cents is potentially the new um, base in terms of uh, movement forward. So right now with the way things stand, I'll just mark up one more level through here on our momentum line and we are approaching short-term momentum resistance. So if we can get through 81, 82 cents, I think we're attacking those all-time highs at a dollar and then we get to a dollar, then we start to see potential institutional investment. And then Janine loves and it. And then Janine gets excited, and then we could see yeah, yeah. a huge run up from here. Well, I understand now, looking at the chart, why you're so excited about it. So Dr. Phil, live <laughs> and well on that one anyway. Well, next up is Sintara, stock ticker code SNT. Now, Sintara is a clinical stage drug development company targeting extracellular matrix dysfunction with its world-leading expertise in amine oxidase chemistry and other technologies to develop novel medicines for blood cancers and conditions linked to inflammation and fibrosis. Now, I must say, whilst all of that seems highly scientific and complex, Gary Phillips, the CEO, did a great job in allowing us laymen really to fully understand the key points around this stock. Now, can I just right. say with you this one it. here, this was to me the most, um, I guess, eye-opening presentation because this was the, the gentleman, Gary Phillips, that came out and said, if I had my time again, I would not have listed at the time I listed. Yeah. Given with all the pressures listing brings in terms of trying to achieve performance. And what also was mentioned, given the space that this stock is in, uh, being in that biotech space, there it is coming up to about, in by mid-2025, four or five different bits of news flow um, that when you're talking about stocks in this space, news flow is so important to get that uh, potential appreciation in the share price. So mm -hmm. knowing you've got that coming over the next year, um, really right now is the opportune time to be looking at this stock. But it's also news flow that mum and dad actually understand because normally the news flow is so the bigger instos and the fund mm. managers and the brokers you know, start to buy it, to push it. But for mum and dad's purposes, understanding it, because this is like mm. um, inflammation in the brain from what I gather. And it's and the like scarring. the scarring mm. of the brain. So people with Parkinson's disease and other neurological conditions, that's exciting. You it got anything is. you want to add to that? Or? Well, just understanding what it does to people, Parkinson's, for instance, yes. and the scarring and what they can do for this, you know, to make sure that they can actually get this to market faster. Mm. This stock really is a good, good one to watch. Mm. Yeah, and it's not one. I mean, they've got three uh, trials going mm. at the moment. So, right. you know, three different uh, drugs that have potential. But, I mean, at the end of the day with these kinds of stocks, really uh, it's the news, the catalyst. That'll be the catalyst to send the share price higher. So watch the news, but let's have a look at the chart. All right, so on the screen now is the chart of Centaria and... I want to start off big picture first and zoom out and you can clearly see obviously this stock has had periods of a rapid expansion. It's coming out of one of those contraction phases and zooming in is what's quite interesting. Um, before I do that, just having a quick look at the volume here, you can see that volume has spiked on 
a few occasions with this particular stock showing that real interest, most notably as one around 2011. But what we're seeing recently is really big volume come through. We've seen February 24, um, spike volume uh, tremendously and that follow on all throughout the rest of the year with heightened volume. So that's something to consider. But as we zoom in right now, the stock is in a downtrend. So it's important to note um, that that is happening. We have seen some life recently since May 2024, which is quite nice. But again, we do need to get through this oh, four yeah, cents. Yeah. yeah, we do need to get through this four cents to really um, get us on that flip side of momentum. But the good news about this stock is that that news flow that's coming through, that catalyst, we get two or three or even one really good catalyst coming through, yeah. um, you're going to see the share price flying because there's reason. on this is huge, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah. It is. Yeah, three different it's opportunities three, yes. in 2025. So knowing that itself is such an advantage when you're looking to trade these kinds of stocks because really with a lot of them, you can get stuck sideways for such a long time waiting for that news to come and it may never come. Mm -hmm. But at least knowing that, hey, we've got six months for something to happen, if we see predetermined buyer activity in the share price, well, and there's no such thing as insider trading, right? But if buyers are getting in, it might give you an indication. Yeah, you, and but you're giving them the insight anyway. That's, well, generally, that's yes. And knowing 2025 is a, is going to be the year for them, mm, yeah. definitely. Oh, yeah. So watch that Must space. Watch, well, watch, anyway, yeah. that was eight stocks that we liked the most on a day one of the conference. Now, before we move on to the stocks from day two, I wanted to ask the panel their pick of the bunch. I'm going to go to you straight away, Phil, but I think I've got a guess on what that is. Yes, it was the one just before this, if I just bring up the name, Argenica Therapeutics. That's your pick? Yes, that's my pick. The chart, I always um, want to see that the buyer activity is being supported with the story and, uh, yeah, we can't get better than that. All right, Alex, what's your pick? I think Bubs. Bubs I'm, I'm for me. Very. That's it for part one on our take on the best stocks from the 2024 Microcap Conference. Stay tuned next week for part two.